Todd Kukin is a senior program associate with the Science Technology Innovation Program at the Woodrow Wilson Center. He joins us to discuss some interesting experiments with gen uh, genetically modified organisms in Florida. Todd, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Be before we get started on the specifics of our subject matter, maybe you could tell our viewers about the Science Technology and, and Innovation Program. Sure. So the, the STIP program here at the Wilson Center um, looks at new and emerging technologies and tries to look at the sort of governance structures around these game-changing technologies about 10, 20, 30 years out into the future. Um, where we try to sort of analyze sort of what those potential benefits and potential risks might be and different governance strategies to sort of get us to that place in time. Great, thanks. And, and uh, one of those things that we've been talking about a lot in recent years are GMOs, genetically yes. modified organisms. And people usually associate those with foods, but we're talking about mosquitoes. That's correct. So the technology has sort of developed over the years to a point um, where we can now start um, modifying more um, more complex organisms. So this one particular example, um, this company Oxitec, has been using a technology called synthetic biology to genetically engineer mosquitoes as a, con as a disease vector control mechanism to control uh, dengue fever in particular, in this case, in the Florida Keys. So mosquitoes uh, could, taking out other mosquitoes, in essentially. A, in essence, you, dis you, de you engineer the mosquito so when it breeds with the female mosquito, all of the offspring basically die off. So over time, you drive the species um, into extinction in that local area. Th this sounds incredibly precise. So how far down the tracks are we with this type of technology? How sophisticated are we in our ability to manipulate a living organism? So this one is ready to go. So this particular company has already applied for a field trial in the Florida Keys. They've actually tested these mosquitoes in other areas throughout the world. Um, so the technology is here now. It's more a matter of in essence, public acceptance of whether or not um, people want to utilize this technology. Which is not coming easily. Uh, robo mosquito, Franken mosquito, we're hearing all these things in headlines. Well, t tell us about the concerns. That's correct. So, so this particular example, they want to test this mosquito in an area of the Florida Keys that has about 400 households um, on this particular feeder island that's just off of uh, Key West. Um, but a petition garnered over 150,000 negative responses to, to the release of these mosquitoes. So there's, you know, there's concerns of around, you know, around GMOs in general. This particular example, people are worried about, you know, what happens if the mosquito bites me? What happens if the mosquitoes are completely eliminated um, from the area? And they're, while the company has talked openly about what it is they want to do, people are concerned about sort of the risks around releasing these types of mosquitoes, and they generally feel like they're being used as guinea pigs. Mm -hmm. from, from, a, from the perspective of a scientist, are these concerns legitimate scientifically, or is this more about trust? Um, I'd say it, it's, a, it's a bit of both. So there's a trust in, in the system in general, in terms of, of who's really sort of over, who has the oversight of this type of, of test. So what you're talking about is a small scale release of these mosquitoes in an area that does have humans living in it. And there really is not a lot of research that's been done showing sort of the interactions of these types of genetically engineered mosquitoes in particular and their interactions with the humans. The company would say that there's no, there's no danger there for you, but in terms of being able to point to specific examples, there really isn't a lot of evidence. So from the trials they've run, it's just too recent for them to have good data? There's not a lot of, the, the issue with sort of genetic engineering in a particularly sort of a field um, release of this sort of scale is that you want a sort of long-term studies to be able to show mm -hmm. the impact of these, and we just don't have those yet. Gen generally speaking, I, I know this is a, such a broad question, but when it comes to anticipating unintended consequences when we meddle with nature, what's the track record look like when it comes to industry, when it comes to governments? Uh, do we get it wrong as much as we get it right? How, how have we done? Uh, I think, you know, I think you'd have to look at it um, Example by example, I would uh, say. Yeah, I, I would say our case. sort of track record of introducing species to eliminate other species is not very good. Um, so if you look at sort of the introduction of cane toads in Australia, for example, that was put in there to eliminate a different um, species that was destroying crops, you now have an overrun of cane toads that basically are everywhere on the continent um, of Australia. So those are some of the concerns when you talk about these sort of ecosystem management questions where you're using other species to control another species. This particular example um, is interesting because the, the, 
the mosquito that they're actually going after is actually an invasive species itself. So this, mm. this particular species that carries the dengue fever isn't supposed to be in the Florida Keys. And so eliminating that species using its own species per se, right? So you're using the same mosquitoes to kill off the mosquitoes you want to get after um, is a different dynamic, but you are still talking about manipulating a species to sort of control an ecosystem problem. It's, it sounds as if there is just no 100% safe way to conduct that's, and that tests. And that's true for any technology. There isn't, you are never going to be able to get to a zero risk. There's always a the Jurassic risk. Park risk. Yeah, there, yeah, that's a good example, sort of something that could go completely wrong. Um, but, you know, looking at these technologies, one of the things that, that we do at SIP is try to get more public engagement around these technologies as they're being developed. So you can talk through what the concerns are before you get to a point where we are now, where the company is set up with their lab and ready to release their mosquitoes. What, what should, we, would, should we be looking at beyond this experiment or proposed experiment with mosquitoes in the Florida Keys? Where are the other uh, hot industry areas in the use of GMOs? So I think, the, particularly in the U.S., this question of, of GMOs in food has sort of res, has resurfaced. Um, and with new technologies like synthetic biology, you're going to be able, to, you're going to start seeing sort of more complex organisms that are going to be able to be manipulated using genetic engineering. So different types of food flavorings, different types of medicines, um, this type of species control level um, are other types of applications that will be coming sort of coming out sort of mm -hmm. over the next few years. Um, with a sort of, I would argue, not a lot of strategy in terms of the U.S. government, in terms of their research strategy to address some of the, the concerns that people have. Well, thanks for kicking off what we uh, hope will be monthly discussions with your program. Not always you, but right. with your program. <laughs> and this is a fascinating start. And uh, maybe when we have an op it, we'll see what happens with this trial in Florida. If it actually gets the green That's light, right. so they, can go back and the talk application about it. is in the FDA now. And so we're, it's any day now whether they're going to give a green light or a red light. Thanks, Todd. No problem. Appreciate it.